Here's a Bush SRP31C and the 31D model. This has got a uh, Monarch BSR record deck, which is a UA16. I think it's an FSR. Mark was working on it just a while ago. He said something about that. You've got a line output and an input over here so that you can get guitars or um, keyboards or other record players extension units can be used with it for getting the uh, stereo. You've got the AU31C model here, which is uh, only the extension box with the amplifier and speaker for, um, again, getting your stereo. With a tertiary winding, you get a line output, and I like that. It's post EQ and feedback, and you get the pentode side of the valve working, as well as an output transformer winding. Also, you've got to watch out for the electrostatic tweeter. You've got HT on there, so you don't go cutting them wires until you've checked and you switched them off and whatever. We've converted some of our record players to take the dynamic moving coil type tweeters. A lot of these record players here, the Danset, Bush, Hacker, Dynatron and etc. They used the twin type valves which used ECL, 82, 83 or 86 type. Um, with this record player, the SRP, the C model has the 83 and the D model has the 86. I'm very fond of these valves, they sound fantastic. Mullard, Brimer, Marconi. But anyway, we're going to go through the circuit diagram now, the 31C model, and Phil Moss is going to take you through that. Right, what we're looking at here is an extension amplifier for a Bush SRP31C. This is called an AU, that is Auxiliary Unit 31C. The record player on its own is mono, but it is facilitated to be run stereo using an external amplifier and speaker, which is the same amplifier and speaker used in the record player itself. So if you couldn't afford stereo, you bought the record player, and when you'd saved your pennies, you bought this. There are a number of interesting things about this, apart from the fact that being an extension to a record player to turn it into stereo is fairly unusual. So it brings in a signal from the cartridge and when that happens it breaks the monoing connection on the record player so only one channel comes here. It comes in and surprise surprise there is a volume control. It uses ECL83s which are fairly small valves frankly. The 82 and the 86 are considerably bigger. So the signal comes into the ECL83s in push-pull. Very conventional circuit, so the first valve is a preamp plus the feedback goes to it, I'll come back to that. It feeds the split load phase splitter, we've seen plenty of them, feeding the pentode output valves in push-pull. There are a number of things to note about this. I think they may have had a little bit of problem with stability, either that or it needs tone correction. So they've got a 1000 PF or a 0.001 microfarad capacitor across the output transformer. As I've noted elsewhere, the effects of leakage inductance in the output transformer cause instability and you have to do things to suppress the effect. Either a capacitor on its own as here or a capacitor in series with a resistor. Now here they've also got 2200 PF and the 22K that is either for stabilizing or tonal correction. This unit has a woofer and it has an electrostatic tweeter. Being electrostatic, it needs polarizing. So you've got 47K from the HT positive and the other plate goes to earth through 47K. It does not draw any current unless it's defective. So there would be no DC voltage lost across those two resistors. Each side of the speaker is then driven out of phase via 2200 PF capacitors. Um, so the anti-phase there, you get a large voltage swing, AC voltage swing across the capacitance of the tweeter. Now I said that I thought that this might be tonal correction. It may well be that the tweeter was quite bright. 
the piezos increase their output with increasing frequency because being a capacitor, they draw more current because just like an ordinary capacitor, their reactance drops with increasing frequency. It is usual to have series resistors to limit the current. I say series resistors. If you put a tweeter um, on the low voltage side across a woofer, one resistor will do. But as this is driven in push-pull, you would need to have a resistor in each arm to balance it. So, going to two other features. The director gets all worked up about it having a tertiary winding for tape recorder output, pointing out that you get the sound, in other words, distortion of the amplifier, plus the effect of the tone controls. This is true. There is a much better reason, I suspect, why they had to use a tertiary winding instead of the usual simply taking a signal off one of the anodes through a capacitor to a recall terminal. That is, seeing this is a stereo unit, if you're using a stereo tape recorder, you will be taking an input from the record player and an input from the extension amplifier. Unless one or both of those are transformer isolated, you're almost certainly going to finish up with a hum loop. Because this has a tertiary winding giving you a floating output signal, there is no hum loop. It's also safer, although this does have um, a three wire mains, and if people have the sense to use their earth connection, of course, a lot of people like to leave it off. Or they may have plugged it into a two pin mains because this is old enough. A lot of places still had two pin main sockets. Um, so you could get a voltage on the chassis. The transformer isolates you. So it's safety plus eliminating a hum loop. Plus you do get the effect of the tone controls. Of which... They are in the feedback. The feedback is applied to the grid of the first valve in two places. Let's first deal with the tone controls. They're conveniently marked bass and treble. So what happens here is the 0.01 microfarad in combination with the 56K represents a short circuit at medium and high frequencies. Remember this is feedback, negative feedback. So the more bass you feed back, the less bass output you get. So if you turn this down and short circuit the bass, you don't feed bass back and therefore the gain is increased at low frequencies. To separate it from the treble control, we have a resistor here in series with the signal. That is not significantly attenuated by the loading effect of the treble control because the capacitor in the treble control circuit, which is a short circuit approximately at treble, is approximately an open circuit to middle and base. And here we have the same thing in reverse. So if you turn this down there, you feed back no treble, and that gives you treble boost. If you move the pot to this end, you feed back a lot of treble, and that means that you get very little treble output. Now, overall, there is another feedback loop through the 5.6K and the 0.01. That, I think, you would find, particularly in combination with the 0.02, is middle feedback. So the idea is that you feed the signal back and set a certain level of gain at the middle frequencies, but at high and low frequencies, you can vary it according to taste using the tone controls. There's not a lot else to say. It has a fairly conventional power supply. It is an isolating mains transformer. Um, and they do have a fuse to protect the amplifier, though it doesn't surprisingly cover the current drawn through the motor. Um, the secondary winding of the transformer is an auto winding tapped for the six volts for the heaters and there's an indicator lamp there. 
it's halfway rectified, which is a bit naff, um, by a metal rectifier um, into a big capacitor, 50 microfarads, feeding the output stage, as is so typical. You then get a decoupling resistor and another big capacitor, which means that the supply of HT to the input triodes is very smooth. You will find pretty well no hum on the supply by that point. Um, ideally, of course, it would all be smoothed with a choke, but that was more expense. Particularly with halfway rectification, of course, you need a big capacitor and you're still likely to get a residual hum at 50 cycles. If it was full wave rectified, you get uh, frequency doubling, which means your ripple is at 100 cycles, which means that the reactance of the capacitor is half what it is at 50, and therefore a given value of capacitor is twice as good at smoothing, roughly speaking.